Mr. Shu and Mr. Hat both don't have any money. Mr. Shu earns $100 and decides he wants to put it in the bank. Mr. Shu finds the bank he really likes. Right now the bank doesn't owe anybody anything and it doesn't have anything. It's a brand new bank. Mr. Shu opens an account at the bank and deposits his $100 into the bank. The bank creates a checking account for Mr. Shu and writes down that they owe Mr. Shu $100. The bank creates a receipt for Mr. Shu and then gives Mr. Shu the receipt along with a checkbook so he can access his money along with an application for a debit card so he can access his money just like a credit card. According to the rules in the United States, the bank only has to keep $10 to cover the $100 it owes to Mr. Shu. So it sets $10 aside as its reserves, and the excess reserves, the other $90, are available to lend out to borrowers. After talking with the bank, Mr. Hat decides that he can go into debt up to $90 and pay back interest to the bank. The bank helps Mr. Hat to produce a promissory note that Mr. Hat will be giving to the bank in exchange for some cash. Mr. Hat signs the promissory note and gives it to the bank. The bank then creates a matching account for Mr. Hat in the amount of $90, which it owes to Mr. Hat. The bank then creates a slip to recognize that Mr. Hat has $90 in the bank. The slip of paper is given to Mr. Hat and the loan creation process is complete. A close look at the situation shows that the bank owes $190, $100 to Mr. Shu and $90 to Mr. Hat. The bank also has on hand $100 in cash and a promissory note from Mr. Hat to pay the bank back $90 plus interest. Things balance out and in effect the bank has slightly more than it started with since it has the promise of interest payment from Mr. Hat. When we look outside the bank, we see that Mr. Hat believes he has $90 as deposit in the bank, and Mr. Shu believes he has $100 as deposit inside the bank. It appears that $190 now exists. So from $100 in cash deposited in a bank, a fractional reserve bank that has a 10% reserve requirement, in other words, it has to keep 10% of the money, $90 can be lent out, and the money supply expands by 90%. Instead of having $100 in cash, we have now $190 in deposit money. Where did the extra $90 come from? The extra $90 essentially came from Mr. Hat's promise to pay the bank back $90 plus interest. It's money that's being drawn from the future into the present to back up current money that's being used by Mr. Hat and by Mr. Shu. In order for Mr. Hat to access the $90, he simply brings in the proof that he has an account at the bank, and he asks for his $90. The bank is left in a kind of difficult position. Since the bank traded the cash for the promise to pay, and since the bank already had a promise to pay, those two cancel each other out and can then be eliminated. Now if we take another look at the bank, we see that the bank owes Mr. Shu the same $100. But as backing, the bank only has a single $10 bill and a single promise from Mr. Hat to pay back $90 plus interest, but sometime in the future. While this may appear like an impossible situation, this is exactly the situation that almost every bank in the United States is in at the moment. This works because it's not just one borrower and one depositor at this bank. In reality, there are hundreds of depositors and hundreds of borrowers. If we think of Mr. Shu as representing all the depositors having deposited $100 million in the bank, and we think of Mr. Hat as all the borrowers having borrowed $90 million from the bank, then we can see that $10 million is probably sufficient to satisfy all the needs of all the depositors. At this point, Mr. Hat spends his money and we see that the soundness of the banking system rests entirely upon the borrower's ability and willingness to repay the entire amount of the loan with interest in the time frame required. If the borrowers can't or won't, then the bank is in serious trouble, as are all the depositors. For more information, search the internet for Fractional Reserve Banking. For LocalFuture.org, this is Aaron Wiesner.